I'm Nick Wilson-Burrows, and I'll be talking to you today about mandatory vaccinations in Florida. So my research was fueled by the question, what is the most effective way to increase mandatory vaccination rates in Florida? And I decided to look at this question because it's still relevant today. This article was posted by the Tampa Bay Times just on April 9th, saying that 25,000 students just claimed a religious ob objection to vaccines, and that it's increased by 375% over the past seven years. And here's a chart posted by the um, CDC. Obviously, it's a lot to digest right there. So I looked at the three most concerning vaccines. And as you can see, usually, as technology gets better, the, um, it, the rate of the cases of the vaccines decrease. But in the past 20 years, in these three diseases, it's actually been increasing. And that's because of this um, resurgence in the religious exemptions. So to look at what I'm start to tell you about why we need to increase these vaccination rates, the first thing I wanted to look at was the constitutionality of vaccines. Can we really mandate people to get vaccinated if they don't want to? We can also look at vaccine reluctancies. Why don't people get vaccinated? and the proposed solution to increasing vaccination rates already in the field. So starting off with the constitutionality of mandated vaccines, I looked through the cases that have been regarding vaccines that have been taken to court, and obviously this isn't a very new debate. Starting in 1905, Jacobson challenged the Commonwealth of Massachusetts saying it was unconstitutional to make him get vaccinated when he believed scientifically that vaccines aren't really helpful. The the Supreme Court decided that Jacobson was in fact wrong in this case and that vaccines are helpful despite the facts that he claimed were true. After that, there were a few cases about parenting and whether the, the state can make, tell you how to parent your children. And in cases where it's life or death, yes, the state can tell you to get your children vaccinated. And then after that, these past four cases have been mostly dealing with specifically mandating vaccinations in school, and there have been cases where schools do not allow children who do not have the certain vaccines, and when asked if this was constitutional or not, every single time the state decided that this was constitutional. And now we're going to vaccine reluctancies. In the state of Florida, there's two reasons that you can get um, exempt from vaccines. One of them is the medical exemption. This basically means that the child can't be vaccinated due to medical reasons such as allergies or just that their body cannot take these vaccines. And these really can't be helped. This is something that the child is born with he de and they're the most at risk for getting these um, diseases when they outbreak. And the other reason in the state of Florida are the religious exemptions. So these include genuine religious beliefs or a lot of people get these vaccines. Um, get these because they're just afraid they're not safe, they don't really know what the vaccine is for or the side effects, or they just can't access the vaccines so for reasons such as monetary problems or their doctor is just too far away. So I looked at the field, at proposed solutions that have already been put out there, and I categorized them into four categories. The first one is financial incentives. Really? Um, the two that I saw were the role of tort law by Scioli stated that we should give financial penalties to um, people who do decide not to get vaccinated. And the other side of that is the state funded vaccines, as in giving more money to people so that they can get these vaccines if they don't have the resources. The state of Florida already has the Vaccine for Children initiative, so they're working on getting vaccines um, for people who cannot access them. The next category is education. The articles that deal with education mostly talk about having the doctors sit down with the patients, give them more information, or having the patients attend seminars on vaccines. Third is increasing doctor efficiency by decreasing the necessary amount of visits. So, so getting more vaccines done in one sitting instead of constantly going back to the doctor. And finally, the one that I saw the most were increasing laws. So making the law stricter, taking away the religious exemptions, which is, as you can see, constitutional. Three states have done this so far, but Florida still has this religious exemption. And going into my um, research project, I thought that this was gonna be my answer. This was my hypothesis, 
that the doctors would tell me that increasing um, and making the law stricter by taking these uh, religious exemptions away would be the answer. So first I'll talk to you guys about how I really researched um, where my um, religious exemption, sorry, how I researched um, what the most effective way to increase vaccines is. So I decided to go through the general interview approach highlighted by Turner in his article, Qualitative Interview Design, a Practical Guide for Novice Investigators. And the general interview approach calls for open-ended questions and it allows for follow-up questions. This was the best way to look at my project because I, I realized that I need expert opinion on this. I couldn't go out and ask the public what they think because I wanted a more educated answer. And the follow-up questions are good for me because I can clarify anything I need to with these people. This was the interview template that I used with all of my interviews. As you can, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but the first two questions really have to do with getting to know the person I'm interviewing and for data for me. And then the next four questions are more about, are dealing with what I found in the literature review and whether they agree or disagree or if they have new understandings for me. And those final two questions deal with how, um, deal with answering my question on how to increase vaccination rates. So what did I find? Well, first of all, I got to interview four people. One of them was the supervisor at the Immunization and Refugee Clinic with the Hillsborough Health Department. Next was the operations manager at the Immunization and Refugee Clinic with the Hillsborough Health Department. Then I had the registered nurse of the whole Florida Department of Health in the immunization section. And finally, the health center administrator for the Department of Health in Pasco. So the fact that I got four interviewers what also ended up being my limitation. Because I wanted a clear view of the whole state of Florida, but due to outreach, I was only able to get four from two different counties and one from the Florida State Department. So to, to make the results better, I would recommend getting more people from different counties. So after my interview, I logged the questions that they answered and I put them in this chart. And we're gonna go through the most, through the um, more important new understandings that I had. Two out of four of the experts I had stated that most states have a per similar perception about vaccines. I asked this so that I could see whether studies in other states could be applied to Florida, and the fact that two agreed and two did not agree kind of shows that there is sort of, there's not a clear understanding about whether we can do this. Next, three of the four said that they noticed common traits among those who refused to vaccinate. One of my experts said that there were geographical clusters in which these people live. Another told me that there's a tendency to miss deadlines between the people who refuse to get vaccinated. And finally, I was told that there's a lack of education among those. These answers aren't really mutually exclusive, so they don't disagree with each other. This is important because this means that there's more information that I didn't find in my literature review, which can lead us to finding more people then all of my experts agreed that many people get religious exemptions to vaccinations even if they're not religious. This agrees with what I found in the literature review, which um, would state that maybe we should make the religious exemptions um, more. We should target these people with the religious exemptions. And then all four experts also agreed that most people disagree to vaccinations due to misinformation, how they don't understand the side effects, they don't understand if this is really necessary. Finally, er, they also agree that if a strategy to increase vaccination rates for one vaccine works, the, strain, the same strategy will work for another vaccine. I asked this question so that I could see whether, um, specifically for the human, human papilloma, sorry, uh, the HPV vaccine, whether if there's a lot of studies done on increasing rates for the HPV vaccine, so I wanted to see if this could be applied to school mandated vaccines. And finally, all experts agreed that education is the best way to increase vaccination rates. This was surprising to me because, as I said, most of the literature in the field states that making the law stricter would be um, the way to increase vaccination rates. So I was surprised to find that, that they agree that education is the best way to talk to the patients and teach them more about what they don't understand. Something else I found in my interview was this, these Immunews articles. 
MU News is the, the quarterly newspaper um, by, by the Florida Department of Health where they go through what's been new in the Florida Department of Health, what they're going through, what they're working on. And the health center administrator for the Department of, of Health in Pasco had, gave me all four articles of the, of the year 2018. So to look through these, I did a content analysis of the four, and I tried to find the solutions mentioned, and I put this in this chart. To be easier to digest, I put them right here. So the most, the solution mentioned the most to increase vaccination rates was educational material, such as new pamphlets or maybe talking to the patients. Then were seminars and conferences. So these were for both the doctors and the patients. That are, there were five different cases stated in these immunos articles. Next were incentives for vaccine providers, such as awards for the hospitals or maybe benefits to those who reach a certain goal of vaccines. And third was annual events. So looking back at this chart, the registered nurse of the Florida Health Department told me that um, when I asked her if there were any common traits between those who decided not to get vaccinated, she told me a lot of them live in geographical clusters and gave me this map. As you can see, this map shows the, the red areas are the areas where there are religious exemptions and the darker they are, the more religious exemptions there are in that area. And as you can see, there's a few clear clusters of people who decided not to get vaccinated. And this is important because it's a new understanding and it shows us where to target when we're talking about increasing vaccination rates. So, there were four interviews, there were four immune news articles in that map. What did I find? Well, all experts agree that education is the best way to increase vaccination rates. The most cited solutions for increasing vaccination rates in these immune news articles were educational material, seminars and conferences, incentives for vaccine providers, and annual events. And third, that there are geographical clusters of those who decide not to vaccinate. So what do these three mean? What is the most effective way to increase mandatory vaccination rates in Florida? Well, the most obvious answer is to educate the parents. From my interviews, I found that education is the most effective way to increase vaccination rates. But who educates them? Their healthcare professional is cited as one of the top three sources of vaccine information from this immune news article of the third quarter. And talking more about that immune news article, they talked, the, one of the most mentioned solutions were incentives and seminars for educating these parents. So we need to create incentives for these doctors to attend seminars on how to better educate the parents. And finally, we need to focus on these geographically clustered areas that I found in that map. So we get these doctors to attend seminars specifically in those geographical geographically clustered areas, make incentives for the doctors to attend so that they can better educate the parents. So what does this mean? Who's affected? Well, the vaccine providers are affected because they're gonna learn a more effective way to educate the parents and to find um, ways to increase vaccination rates personally. Also, the parents who exempt the mandatory vaccination on religious grounds, these people are gonna have a better understanding of vaccinations and they'll be more likely to vaccinate their children. And finally, those unable to get vaccinated due to medical reasons. These people right now are the most at risk because even if they wanna get vaccinated, they can't. So increasing vaccination rates is going to help them be safer. So recommendations for further research. One of the, um, one of the answers I got were um, by the supervisor of the immunization and refugee clinic with the Hillsborough Health Department. She told me that Florida has certain health guidelines that private doctors do not follow. This is concerning because this could be a new portion where um, we can target that and increase vaccination rates that way. So we need to do more studies on how this happens and how to prevent this from happening. And finally, all experts agreed that um, all experts agreed that strategies for one vaccine will work for another. And there's a lot of research done on the HPV vaccine, but there's not research proving that these strategies using for the HPV vaccine could be applied to other vaccines. So we need to do research so that we can apply these rates to other rates. Here's my references and thank you. All right, Nick, so your questions are coming. Um, 
We're going to select one from each category, as you know. So question number one, what was one obstacle or challenge you encountered while implementing your research, and how did you address that? The main challenge I reached was out was finding a way to contact these people. So it was really hard to reach these people because they're professionals in the field. They have a they have work every day. They it's really hard for them to stop out of nowhere, give me 30 minutes of their day for an interview. So what I had to do is I had to be consistent, calling them back, reaching them by email, finding multiple ways to reach to reach them. And then as soon as I got a, a hold of them, I told them um, that what my, the purpose of my project was and how, and I asked them to schedule a date that worked for them. Question two, okay. What additional questions emerged during your research based on your experience? What advice would you give to other researchers who might choose to investigate those questions? So a question that I got was, if education is the best way to increase vaccination rates, how come there's so much on stricter laws? How come there's not more on education? So I would recommend um, someone to look more into the effects of education and possibly if they look up these um, strategies used to increase the HPV vaccine, I know that there's studies done on seminars where, um, where patients go to the seminars to increase HPV vaccines. So I would look at that and compare those to the school mandated vaccines. If you had three more months to work on this research question, um, project goal, what additional research strategies would you put into practice? So if I had three more months, I would try to um, call more people from different counties and try to do networking across the people that I did interview because that was the way that I was able to reach other people. For example, the person, the two people in the Hillsborough Health Department, they work together. I we got one contact through another. Okay, very good. You are all